Spiritualism, brought to you by Leading Sheep and the Livestock Biosecurity Network. My name is Sarah Jane Wilson and I'm the Regional Manager for LBN in Northern Australia. Botulism is a disease that's caused by a toxin produced by the bacteria called Clostridium botulinum. This bacteria likes conditions where oxygen levels are low and where it's warm and moist. Hence, it proliferates well in decaying carcasses and in plant matter. It also has the ability to form spores. Spores are a very clever adaptive mechanism that helps the bacteria survive in unfavorable conditions, and in particular in this case, making them resistant to hot and dry conditions, meaning that they can survive viably in the soil and in bones and in the environment for many years. When the bacteria are growing and reproducing, they produce the botulism toxin. This toxin affects the nervous system of animals, preventing nerve function, and in the end, you end up with a flaccid paralysis. Most animals end up dying from respiratory failure as the muscles that help them breathe become paralysed. All warm-blooded animals are susceptible to botulism toxin, with cattle being one of the most susceptible species. Treatment in production animals is generally very unproductive and not many cases is successfully treated due to the need for high intensity nursing and, and the impact of paralysis on the breathing muscles. The bacterium occurs commonly in soil and is also found in the digestive tract of about 20% of normal cattle and other grazing species, which means that bacteria can therefore be spread through livestock movements between property and between areas on a property. Poisoning generally occurs through the consumption of feed or water that is contaminated with botulism, spores or toxin, such as rotten or mouldy hay or silage, or uh, feed that may contain animal carcasses. It can also be, um, poisoning can also occur um, through directly eating animal carcasses. Clinical signs of botulism will vary from sudden death, where animals collapse and die in a number of hours, to a slow progressive paralysis where animals may take many days to die. In an extensive grazing system, often cattle or sheep are just found dead. Stock in the early stages of infection, if you catch them, will display wobbly gait, stiffness and drooling. Typically, they're found sitting or lying, unable to rise, often with their head turned towards their flank, as indicated by the animals in the picture, or sometimes have their hind legs extended behind them in a frog-like position. Often their tongues will be hanging out and because of the inability to swallow, you'll see saliva pooling. Quite often when the tongue is hanging out, the animal will no longer have the ability to retract the tongue. So in the field, this is a, a diagnostic test that you can use. If you pull the tongue and they're unable to retract, that's often indicative of botulism. The vaccination protocols for botulism um, are varied. For sheep and cattle, there's the original vaccination preparation where you go through a protocol of two initial doses, four to six weeks apart, and then a yearly booster. There are a number of companies that make this product and we don't advocate one over the other. It's whatever is most suitable and most cost effective for your enterprise. Additionally for cattle, we now have options that are more suitable for practical management, which is a single dose followed by a yearly booster. And also now there is available a single dose um, once every three years for a booster, which makes it a little bit easier to manage. Preventative measures uh, for bot to reduce risks of botulism include deterring animals from bone or carcass chewing, especially in the extensive grazing systems. Where protein and phosphorus deficiency is apparent, stock will be more likely to undertake this behaviour so if you keep your aggregation points and watering points clear of carcasses and bones, that really is best practice. Ideally, burning carcasses where possible also helps with the spread of the remains through predation and will help to discourage the spores from staying in the environment. We need temperatures of above 120 degrees to destroy the toxin and the spores. So composting um, or leaving to lie isn't effective for killing these in the environment. Botulism can also occur in the more intensive grazing system if stock consume contaminated fodder or water. This often occurs if organic matter goes rotten uh, and ends up in the feed, as might happen if carcasses such as snakes or mice or other animals become trapped in hay or silage, 
or if high moisture feeds, such as brewer's grains, go rotten. If you're purchasing in feed, be aware of what you've purchased and how it's been stored before you've purchased, and ideally source incoming feed supported by a fodder vendor declaration. If you have any questions on botulism or the prevention of botulism, please contact me at sjwilson at lbn.org.au. More information on vaccination and some resources for vaccination are available from MLA, Making More From Sheep and Future Beef. Thank you for listening to this presentation and if you have any questions, please get in contact.